All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. If you've been watching, you know that we've been bringing you nothing but heat, fire, impact, all of the above. Uh, and I'm excited about this next guest. I'm going to claim it. I'm going to tell you that this is going to be a classic. This is going to be impactful. This is going to change your life on so many different levels. We have Mr. Build. Organize, document, delegate in the building. <laughs> Mr. Derek Harper Sr., what's up, brother? What's going on with you, King? I appreciate you, man. Thank you so All much right. for uh, being our guest. And, um, you know, I I'm excited about this interview because, um, you know, I've been in the financial education mm -hmm. space for a very long time. Um, and it's a small world, so right. whenever somebody's moving and shaking in that world, uh, you know their name, you know what they're doing, you know mm -hmm. the impact that they're making. Um, and but the first time I, you know, I met you, I met you uh, at Accelerate, you know, 180 in Atlanta. You know, fast shout to our sis mm -hmm. Ashley Ann. Um, and when I tell you, man, you are a powerful brother. Your, your testimony was powerful. Man, um, it really moved me. I learned a lot. Like, like, like I learned so much, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, at that time. Um, but for those who don't know you, mm -hmm. who is Derek Harper Sr.? Man, you know, every time I, I'm recording, every time I'm actually interviewed, I have a hard time, like, explaining who I am. Because, you know, I come from a background where my mom always told to uh, make sure that your servant's broom is bigger than your ego. Mm. So I don't like talking about myself, but I like talking about my mission and my purpose, mm. right? So I like to build, organize, document, delegate, but most of all, that's why I'm even wearing this shirt, Reach 1000, mm. um, because it's the movement. Mm. I can't reach a million people, but I can reach a thousand people mm. and empower them. They can reach a thousand people. Mm. Together, we reach a million, man. We can actually gain, you know, economic empowerment mm. in our community, man, and just, you know, I'm just big on serving about that. That's my mission, bro. Mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, I'm not letting you off the hook, though, right? This is, this is inside the vault, so I need to get inside right, the vault. Right, I'm not letting you off the hook. I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's cool, right? It's cool right, to say, right, right. but I'm not letting you off the hook because here's the deal. This is, this is uh, you know, I used to be the same way, right? right. I used to be the same way in which um, I... Um, I did a lot of great things in my life, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I, was, I was afforded, right to, right, to do a lot of great things. I've served a lot of great people. Um, and I never really talked about myself, right? right. Um, until I realized that um, there's somebody mm -hmm. who, who comes from where I come from, right? right? I'm from the projects. I, I grew up in Harlem, St. Nicholas Projects. Okay. And there's somebody who, who a single parent home, youngest of three, hustling since eight, like, and, and, and I, was, I was a VP at 24. I was a CEO of a credit union. Mm -hmm. so, so my story, I realize now, is, is really not me. It's not really not ego. Right, ego right. is edging God out, right? right, right In the right, words right, of, right. of Wayne Dyer. But me telling my, my story, right, is not mm -hmm. really ego. It's really me inspiring someone. Got you. Right? Yeah, no more and there. so I know, I know you've been through a lot, bro. Yeah. You've been through a lot. And, and, and where you are right now is a testament uh, to not giving up, mm -hmm. to having faith, mm -hmm. to believing in yourself, uh, to knowing that your circumstance, right, your right. purpose in life is bigger. So, so take me. I don't know how far I want to go back, right? right but, right, but, right. but, but take, but take me to uh, 2008, right? Take me oh, to the Great man. Recession. Take me to, you know, uh, 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 the 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 low point, mm -hmm. right, in your life that sort of springboarded where you are right now, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, right. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, kids are not afraid of the dark, no. right? Yeah. But adults get afraid of the dark, but we know that's where, <laughs> that's where greatness happens, right? Kids, yeah. are, kids are born in the dark, mm -hmm. and so your dark time sprung out the lightness. So talk to me about that dark time, 2008. Man, I call 2008 falling in place, mm, right? Because okay. we fall, right? But we don't realize we've fallen in place. Man, mm. actually, in 2008, I can remember, it was actually 07, mm. going into 08, mm -hmm. um, just before the recession. So I remember, um, man, we pulling up to the house. Mm -hmm. And you know, in Georgia, man, you go 90 days late on your mortgage, bro, um, it's a wrap, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. um, and and if you're stubborn and you say, man, they're gonna have to come put me out, they, they do that. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't know that, right? Yeah, but, yeah. you know, man, we lost it all. Mm -hmm. We got foreclosed on, we lost the house, and then let me tell you, man, we, um, me and my wife, well, we got married at 19, mm -hmm. right? So we eloped. Mm -hmm. Her dad really didn't approve of me at that point. Mm -hmm. So, um, having to go borrow money mm -hmm. to get a U-Haul to go get the, our stuff that they putting out, was humbling. Mm. But when we did that, they actually repoed the car while we was actually going and uh, getting the stuff out of the house. Oh, wow, wow, Because wow. we haven't hiding the car, right? Yep, so, yep, man, yep. and it's crazy. So 
Um, they repoed it, went on about our, our business. But the good thing about it, it was right before the recession happened mm. because I started reading mm. and realizing that, man, um, that the developer mm. um, who built the subdivision and the broker who pushed the house to us, they was married, didn't mm. even disclose it. I didn't know about that that was actually a RESPA violation. She mm. had a gain, a personal gain from him, mm. bro you know, selling the house mm. and didn't disclose that, so it violated RESPA. Um, and when you say RESPA, what's RESPA for those who may not know? That's basically on the settlement agreement, yep. uh, if they don't disclose, on real estate, yep, right? Got it, so got it, got they got to put everything that they're going to be able to gain Absolutely. out of there. Yep. So yep. Um, if they didn't disclose it, they violate RESPA, which right. means they violate the contract. Gotcha, gotcha. And, 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 and if they violate a contract, mm -hmm. then... Well, what happens if they violate the contract? Well, that foreclosure, if yeah. you actually, they can be fine. They can mm. get in trouble. But okay. if you do get a foreclosure, the foreclosure is based on not following the details of the contract. But the contract is voided at that mm. point because, yeah. you know, it's rest. I mean, because they didn't disclose things. So they can be fine. Um, and it's a good way to actually get a foreclosure removed from a credit um, report if the actual agreement that was in place wasn't the real, you know, the agreement that it had supposed to be. Mm. And, so, and so, you know, um, going through foreclosure, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you're going through foreclosure, so just, just to unpack it, you're going through foreclosure, um, and, um, you know, uh, you know, car is about to get repossessed, um, and then while you're, you know, you're getting kicked out of your house, mm -hmm. in the car, trying to move your stuff out of the house, the repo man comes, grabs yeah. the car, and then, and then, and then what? Because you can't hide the car there, because, right. like, you got to keep it out front. Yep. So, man... Yeah. Um, we chased it down. We chased mm -hmm. the repo man down. I just wanted my daughter's ba uh, little kid seat out the car. Yeah, yeah. And they was like, well, to get stuff out the car, you got to give me the keys. Mm. So, you know, handing them keys over. It was like rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And But it, it lights a fire because a lot of us don't really take action, man, until mm -hmm. to God takes something from right, us. And right. we, we blame the devil, but, man, mm -hmm. you know, I just looked at it, man. It, it, it's, it's got, I had to go through that. For sure. But when I went through it, it mm -hmm. made me go and, and, and overdrive to, like, read. I, I didn't know about rest mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. Man, and I just start firing it off, firing off these disputes. It got removed, and those were the only two things that I weren't paying, mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. other stuff was like light bills and all that. They weren't reporting on the credit file, mm -hmm. and none of that. So um, I was able to get it removed, man. Score skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And then we found, um, you know, we found something called Relay Rides mm -hmm. at that point. It's called Turo now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we got a little ignorant again mm -hmm. because now I got to go get the Jag. She got to get the BMW because mm -hmm. now uh, we got our credit back there. Okay, okay. So, man. Man, we found relay rides, man, and started making crazy money on there with the mm. two cars. And then now it was time to go get a house, and the money from the cars was paying for the house. Mm. And then so that's when we realized, like, man, maybe I, I just started blasting out about it on MySpace, on Facebook. I know, you know, I'm aging right, it a little right, bit because right, 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 you know, right. wasn't nobody really on Facebook like yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah. So I just started talking about it, and everybody was like, man, I, I'm, I got foreclosures. I got mm. repos. I yeah. didn't know that because they don't know that the car dealership, if you go there and actually get it financed, mm. they just a broker. The finance. Right department, finance manager, the broker. So on that written agreement, if you go to GM and then they finance it for GM, that broker can only represent GM. So mm -hmm. now that's a written agreement. That's mm -hmm. a written contract, two-way mm -hmm. co um, commitment mm -hmm. or two-way contract. Mm -hmm. But when they sell that, it mm -hmm. becomes a promissory because mm -hmm. you not on the signature, you know, the, the representative from Santander isn't on the signature mm -hmm. with you because yeah. they brokered the deal at that point and sold it, you know, sold that contract to Santander, which made it a promissory note. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when they repoed it, they put it on there as a repossession. Mm -hmm. And it can't be, a promissory can't be a repossession. It can be a charge off. Mm -hmm. So now being that, a uh, bar. A bar. yeah, it, it can bar. be a charge yeah. off yeah. Yeah. because they had to have had possession of the car to repossess the car yeah. and they never had possession. Only GM would have had, you know, well, Nissan in that case yep. would have had possession of the car to yep. repossess the car, yep. and that's how I was able to get it removed from my credit. Report. All right, so look, don't don't miss that, y'all. So so and and the reason why I you know I wanted to go back there, right? Because um, you know you know for me uh, you know my journey started as a you know working at, at, as a banker, mm -hmm. you know almost got foreclosed on, uh, you know because I jumped out, became an entrepreneur, and then during that time you know almost got repoed and things of that nature. But I know that there's somebody listening right now. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that may be going through a foreclosure, who may be going through repossession, who may be going through some things, and they're stressing themselves out because yeah. of their credit. Um, and, and, and if you didn't catch what, what, what Derek just said, is that you know you have to understand the law, how credit yeah. works, right? And yeah. so in his particular case, you know he was able to get the repossession off because, right? He never signed the contract with the people who were reporting to his credit, right? Right? He never signed a contract with them, right? And so now they're reporting a repossession, and it's not true. Yeah. And so the law says, right? So the onus is on the people who put the stuff on your credit report, mm -hmm. right? And so the law says that if the, it, it, you know, if you uh, don't have a contract with them, or if, in, if there's any errors on your report. That it has to come off, and that's how you got, got it off, right? Yep. Then he gave us another bar. So if y'all watched our <laughs> Matty J episode where Matty J was talking about, you know, how he built uh, a business using, you know, you know, car sharing and ride sharing, uh, he gave us another bar. And so I want to, I want, so, 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 so now you have a situation, right, where mm -hmm. um, foreclosure, repossession, because of that, you start, um, you know, doing your due diligence right. and reading and learning. Um, and then how did that, right, how did that 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 um, down period of losing losing it all, um, gaining it back, but then service? Because you talked about service earlier. Yeah. Yeah, um, how did service create this conglomerate, right, well, of, of, of credit repair? Well, because you realize at that point, man, if I ain't know this, how many more people did? So I started using credit to build wealth, and I started um, realizing that, man, I, I was always a builder, mm. but I was always a servant. Yes. So I had to, when, once people started hitting me up and say, man, I needed help, I needed help, I needed help, man, I got too many clients. Mm. And so I was like, man, I got to start systematizing this stuff mm. and, and, and putting it in place. So we built out this company called Point Boosters. And before you know it, man, it just started making money, started making money. Mm. And then I had to start hiring people mm. and things like that. So I took my situation mm. and then instead of like letting it beat me up, mm. I used it, created a solution, told people about the solution, packaged it up and then offered the solution to people to be able to serve them. Mm so that they can start building wealth as well. Mm -hmm. And then I realized the more that I start giving people, man, the more things start happening for me, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm like, man, so at that point I wasn't chasing the money, yep. but the money was coming so fast and it was coming so quick, then I realized, man, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. I gotta go ahead and start putting a system together, mm -hmm. putting teams together. Mm -hmm. And then I went and hired a bunch of people cause man, coming from where we, where we from, like you say, you're from Harlem, yep. when you get on yep. and when you feel like, man, you know, like you're in the struggle so much mm -hmm. and you get on, now I gotta show the world that it's popping. But I did it too early though. Mm -hmm. I started hiring, I hired like 27 people. Mm -hmm. My payroll was thirty-four thousand a week, mm. but my deposits was thirty-two. Wow! So I had to start replacing people, man, with systems, and that's where that whole body concept—the build, the organize, document, delegate—and mm. I did that, man. Within thirty days later, man, I started having the forty thousand dollar months, the eighty thousand dollar months, the hundred thousand dollar months, mm. three hundred thousand dollar months, and you know, with nine, well, with ten percent of the personnel that I had, because I realized that if you put the right system together. You know, you can do anything, man, and that's where the wealth start coming from. Man, and so, and 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 I, I want y'all to understand how important that is, especially for you know whether you have a nine to five, whether you're an entrepreneur. Um, you know, I, I you know I believe that everybody should have multiple streams of income. Um, and you know, one of the biggest things is that people are always trying to do everything, yes. right? They want they want to be be everything, and so you know, and that was one of the impactful things when I heard you speak was like, yo, build, organize it document it, then delegate it. Um, and there was a concept, though, you talked about that I want you to share with, with, with my audience um, around how people start businesses, oh, right? Bro, yeah. A lot of times, <laughs> and, and this is for everybody right now, uh, after you hear this, I need you to change your bio, right? Ch change, change what your bio says, right? A lot of times people start businesses and they say, I'm the CEO. Oh, man, they kill me with that. Talk, talk, talk to us so about that. So the thing that. is, is, man, you got to do a means test before you t say what you are, right? Mm -hmm. So think about this. Always start your business with the mindset of, I got a $10 million business now, because that's what we're trying to get. Yes. So if you had a $10 million business, right, mm -hmm. and you was ready to walk away from it and start another venture, mm -hmm. would you hire yourself to replace you as a CEO of that $10 million business? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Yep. You can't just leave Walmart yesterday, mm -hmm. 
uh, McDonald's yesterday, the bank yesterday, and this and that, and say I'm a CEO. No, that's what the paperwork say, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is how are you gonna be a CEO, and then now you're doing everything as a CEO, and you don't even have your bottom built out. Mm -hmm. So now all the people that you're gonna hire, you're gonna bring them in to replace the culture that you didn't build at the bottom. Wow. Right? So yeah. when you leave your job and then start there, you gotta earn the CEO title, and people don't wanna earn it. People wanna take the shortcut. Mm -hmm. So now um, what they should have been doing is building at the bottom. Mm -hmm. What's your product? Mm -hmm. I sell this. You're a salesperson, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then um, I make this. Okay, so now you're the processor. You're the person that's doing the thing, right? So therefore, when I talk about body in your business, building out, organize, document, delegate, let's take this hamburger, because mm -hmm. I can cook. That's what they want to buy from me. Right. I'm going to build a process, mm -hmm. all right? Now I got to get the burger. What do I freeze it at? The freezing temperature has to be here. So I'm going to build it out. So I got to get it from here to across the counter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now that we know how to do it, it's built out. But then if you bring somebody else in at that point and try to hire them, they don't know the temperature that it needs to be froze at. They don't know how to flip. They don't know how to put it over the counter. So you got to organize it. You got to say, all right, now I know how to make the money. Now I know how to get it from A to Z. I got to organize this because things are all over the place. So now when it comes in, let me organize it step by step by step. But see, a lot of people, they'll build, then they'll organize, then they'll delegate. Mm. And then they'll be like, the person I hired don't know the job. Mm. Why? Because it's not documented. Right. Those are the people with the employees that be like, hey, boss, I need help with this. Hey, boss, hey, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, because mm. it's not documented. Mm. So that's why I say build it out. Once you organize it, now you know efficiently how to make money A to Z. Mm. The funnels is nothing but an organization. The funnel is organized, mm. like when people are building funnels, right? Yeah. You build it out, then it's organized, mm. and then you document it step by step. Mm. So I use something called Screencast-O-Matic. You can use Mm -hmm. um, quick time or if you got Mac mm -hmm. and then record your screen mm -hmm. and then get somebody on Fiverr to take those recordings mm -hmm. and actually transcribe it into a doc mm -hmm. Google Docs they'll screenshot every page you go to mm -hmm. step-by-step process bro that's the documentation mm -hmm. so now when you actually delegate it to somebody mm -hmm. they can read so our concept is if you can read you can lead. Mm. So now think about this. Mm. At the bottom, sales script. I'm putting the sales script together. Mm. I'm recording it. I'm, I'm putting the SOP together. Mm. Now my salesperson knows step by step what screen to go to. Mm. Now I can move over to another job. Mm. Build, organize, document, delegate that. Mm. So when you're delegating it now, you can walk away. Mm. Promote yourself up the supervisor because mm. now you can replace yourself with the sales. Mm. You replace yourself with the fulfillment. Mm. You replace yourself with the marketing. Mm. Now you can supervise that. Mm. Build out a supervisory thing. How do I monitor that, right? Mm organize, document, delegate, and then promote somebody up. Mm -hmm. What I realized that a lot of CEOs don't do that. Mm -hmm. And then they get burnt out, they bring people in. So mm -hmm. if you promote yourself all the way up through your business, mm -hmm. you can always bring somebody else who, uh, who's the highest performer up and promote mm -hmm. them in them spots to walk you out of the business. Mm -hmm. So therefore you won't ever be in that position where who do I replace myself with mm -hmm. on this $10 million business mm -hmm. when I walk away from it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I realized once I start putting that in place, the business is built forever because I didn't take a shortcut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, peace and blessings family, it's Ash Cash. If you're an entrepreneur, coach, or service provider, nothing can boost your business and credibility like the instant authority of being a published author. I am a former 15-year banking executive, and it wasn't until I wrote my first book that I started to see a boost in my business. Now, I've been an author for over 10 years. I've sold over 70,000 books all independently. I have four bestsellers, and my books have been featured on every major media outlet you could think of, all without hiring a publicist. I've coached hundreds of self-published authors on how to write, market, and sell their books the right way, and I have many authors that I've helped become bestsellers, and even help some make five figures before they even launch their book. I've been getting a lot of requests lately for book coaching since I revealed that one of my clients, Julian Gordon, made $111,000 in two months pre-launch on his new book. So I created this new program that is breaking down everything that you need to write, publish your book in 90 days or less, and also all the secrets on how to sell massive books as a self-published author. So go to IncomeFromBooks.com for more information, and for a limited time, you'll get 40% off the normal price, and you don't even need a discount code. I promise you, it's a worthwhile investment. You have a story that the world needs to hear, so let me help you build your impact and your income. Good people need to do good. So let me help you. 
I'll see you on the other side. Incomefrombooks.com. So that's a bar. And so, and, 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 that, and, and even for me, I'll be honest, like we, even when I was starting my business, it made, it, I had to go back to my career as a banker. Like the reason why I was very successful as a CEO of a, of, of a credit union was right. because I started as a teller. Right. And then I was a personal banker. And yep. then I was a private banker. And then yep. I, right? And so I knew all of those positions. And so I could lead. And, and, and a lot of times people are starting top down. It's like building a house, right? It's like building the house, putting the roof first instead of building that foundation, yeah. right? And so, so, so what, like, like, where did that mindset come from? Like, where did you come up with this concept? Like, how did you, um, you know, you know, realize like this is the proper way to build a business? Life. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so experience is the best. You know, life is the best experience, and failing too. Because mm. like I was telling you, my payroll um, was thirty four thousand. Yeah. The positives was thirty two. Yeah. So I start looking around and realize like, man, that person ain't coming in doing what they supposed to do. They ain't doing what they supposed to do. Mm. So I'm gonna tell you, man, I got a, a Gold's Gym membership, mm -hmm. and I spent 30 days in my office and didn't go home. I watched it Gold's Gym. Mm -hmm. I ain't work out. I got the membership because it was closed. And so I made a commitment to my wife, and I said, hey, look, I need 30 days to be able to automate this whole business, mm -hmm. right? And so what I was doing is I was learning everybody's position, mm -hmm. and then I had to go back, and I realized, like, man, we overpaying this person. Mm -hmm. We could put systems in place to do this. We can automate this whole process. Mm -hmm. So I literally went back and built organized, documented, delegated the whole company within 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't going home, because I knew if I went home, my kids was going to want me there, yeah. and then I'm going to be soft, and I'm be like, man, I miss my kids, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. I had to go hardcore. My mm -hmm. wife cooked, she bought it and dropped it off, mm -hmm. lied like she was going grocery shopping, mm -hmm. so the kids won't pop out. But, mm -hmm. uh, man, after 30 days, I came back in, and I was able to get, I had 27 employees, mm -hmm. I was able to get it down to five people, wow. right? So, you know, because, like, I was the credit guy. So think about this. Yeah. Being the credit guy, yep. I'm going and I'm doing live videos. I'm showing people about how life's supposed to look at the credit guy. Mm -hmm. I had $350,000 of available credit when I first started talking about it. Mm -hmm. Imagine this. Payroll 34, yep. deposits 32. I'm spending $2,000 every single week yep. off of my credit cards. Yep off of my savings, off of everything to run the business. Mm. So now I'm the guy that's charging off cards. Right. I'm getting repos. Right. People can look up public record and see mm. that I, I hid my repo. They had mm. to do what's called like a notice of replevin, bro, to make me get rid of the vehicle yeah, right. so that they can come pick it up. Right, right. And I'm the credit guy. Right. So right. for one, I had to save face mm. and show people that what I was talking about was real. Credit is a way, right? Mm. Yeah. But um, just looking and knowing I didn't want to go through what happened in 07 again, mm. I had to make that commitment. Mm. And, um, and that's why I was like, man, most business owners, if I can save them and have them doing it this way on the front end, they yeah. can prevent that from happening on the back end. Yeah. It's inevitable, man, once you come in as a CEO, unless you're like selling real estate and you really don't need people on you, right. um, it's not going to ever be a business for you, though. Right. Right. You know, so and that's, uh, you know, going through that life, going through humility, going through almost losing it all again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those are always the wake-up calls, man. It's going to make us like, all right, you want to go through it again? Want to, You know, you made your wife a promise that right. you wouldn't do it again. Now right. you're going to lie to her. Right. And I don't want to be a lie to my wife. Bro. Man, so. I, lo I love that. And I, and I, think, I think that's important because I think there's, there's so many people who are out here, you know, wanting to build businesses. Um, and, you know, they, they just do it because they, you know, they're just desperation or they want to get out of a situation or whatever the case may be. But just saying, you know, build it the right way. You know, take your time and build it. Um, and, and one of the things, um, you know, you mentioned that I, I really love is when you start your business, don't start a small business, right? right. Start it with, listen, this is $10 million. You this is a $10 million dollar business. Yep. I'm building a $10 million business. Let me start there. And if I'm building a $10 million business, what is, what's the foundation? What does that look like? So I love that. And so, um, you know, how, how big did you build, you know, using, you know, the body system, right? How, build, how big did you, did you build your credit business to? So I had four employees handling 4,300 clients active. Mm, wow. So we were doing, like, literally $3.8 million a year, almost automated. Wow. And so four employees yeah. doing $3.8 million every year. Because all of the emails was automated yes. at that point. Um, like I said, I built it out, organized, documented. So I used to delegate the phone calls to, mm -hmm. hey, the pre-screen and this and that. Man, I started putting webinars together, automated, you know, converting people into programs via webinars. Mm -hmm. Had the portal. And then what I started doing, instead of bringing the Americans back in, mm -hmm. I only had American people who can lead. Mm -hmm. Because nobody want to work a low-level 9 to 5. So I realized that the 
underperformers came from the low-level employees. Mm. So that's when I started building the international businesses. Mm -hmm. That's when we went to the Philippines, man, and built our own outfit in the Philippines mm -hmm. instead of going through like Upwork and all that. We actually mm -hmm. built one on ground wow. and um, just start replacing. Because I realized if you want $15 an hour, right. I can get three people at $5 an hour, mm -hmm. right? That's good on their economy still. Yeah. One person never gonna outwork three people, especially mm -hmm. if it's back in, like answering questions in the portal and all that. And then mm -hmm. now my managers, because I didn't walk my way out of it, the managers at every division can do that, right? right, right. Now I got a processing manager, marketing manager, customer service manager, so I turn it over to management, and then I was just there as a guide to the managers, man. Right. I, I became a coach, because everybody want to become a coach, right. but they don't grow their business because they ain't coaching their employees. If right. you coach your employees, the managers, then you ain't got to go to coaching to get extra money. Right, right. Oh, I love that, I love that. And so now, right, um, four employees, Right, they're managing an international staff. Mm -hmm. You're making three point eight million dollars per year, and, and and now you're coaching. Yeah, wow. So because I had free time, Absolutely. I literally had so much free time that I was like, man, I was doing stupid stuff with the free time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you know, it's kind of like when you get out of like Rod Wave, like that bar he had. It's hard to tell how to shine when all he know is hard time. Right. So like, I'm eating again. Yeah. So I was like, man, I got money. We doing stuff. Yeah. Um. So then I was like, man, let me coach other businesses, because I was doing conferences, but I realized a lot of people weren't implementing the stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, let me help them through it. Mm -hmm. And then all I started coaching on was automation and then body in their business. Mm, I love it, I love it. And then so, um, what, what what happens next? What's the, what's, the, what's the next business, right? So now you, credit repair, do you still have the credit repair business? Yeah, so, okay. Sort of. Okay. I've formed it out, you know, to yeah. different, didn't want to become a conflict of interest yeah. to a lot of coaching clients and things like that. Yeah. So I, I got like some free stuff, like free software and things like that, that people can do it on their own. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I focus more on consulting work now okay. because I realized that, yeah, my business is good. It's going to help people do that. But yeah. what happens where you and 15 more business owners can get the concept mm. and then go out and change the world? Because mm. a lot of people think it's competition, but it's really not, yeah. right? Yeah. Because if I invite 100 people to your birthday party who don't know you, they ain't coming. Right. I invite 100 people to my birthday party, they come, and that's 100 people that didn't get the help right. because I'm trying to hold on to it. Right. Your circle didn't get the help because I didn't give you the information. Right. And so I realized that having the servant's heart, we could, I could touch more people by educating people who really want to do the work. Mm, mm, I love that. I love that. And then, and so, and so where, where, where does that sense of um, service comes from? Like, where, where, like that, that sense of, you know, I know you mentioned your mom earlier, but yeah. like that, that, that sense of, of being of service, because I, cause I, I don't know, I, you know, I know for certain mm -hmm. that, um, you know, Neo said this, you can serve your way to success, right? right. Like service is the way to be successful, but most people are thinking about themselves. So, like, where, where, where did the easy foundation concept. Come? Let me give yeah. you an easy yeah. concept. Let's say you got a conference tomorrow. Yeah. And I hit you and say, hey, I know you got the conference tomorrow, man. Don't worry about hiring no cleaner, man. I'm going to come and clean up after um, and all that. You know, I'll sit in the back, ain't going to bother nobody, but just let me know when it's over. I'll pop in. Um, just let me know when it's over. You know, I clean up. Mm -hmm. You're going to say yeah to that, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I got a free ticket into your event. I'm a fly on the wall. I'm learning mm -hmm. because I'm serving, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I hit you with a service base. Mm -hmm. But if your ticket's $1,000 and I hit you up and say, hey, bro, can I get it for 300 Now mm -hmm. I'm asking you for something. Right. So it's like, no, nah, bro, I ain't giving no discount. Mm -hmm. So you can get your way into, room, into the room by serving to learn, being humble enough, mm -hmm. right? So therefore, another concept is, hey, Ash Cash, give me your biggest problem that you got right now. Mm -hmm. And when you say, hey, well, I'm dealing with this, this, and this, this is the solution to it, blah, blah, blah. Now, I can sell you something because I'm directly focusing on your problem. Mm -hmm. I'm providing a service to your problem, a solution. Mm -hmm. But if I tell you, hey, Ash Cash, I got you this for sale and you ain't even told me your problem, mm -hmm. therefore I'm selling you something mm -hmm. instead of serving what you actually need my help for. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is nobody, they gonna spend for three reasons. Mm -hmm. And I say this everywhere I go, yep. either results or revenue, mm -hmm entertainment mm -hmm. or convenience. Mm -hmm. We buy life insurance and all of that because it's about the money. I want to be able to save money, I have money when I'm buried. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to live the life of vacation, and you know, that's entertainment and all this, travel and all that, or convenience. If I make your life easier, mm -hmm. then you will pay me mm -hmm. to make your life easier. And then once you realize that those are all service-based things, mm -hmm. if I can help you get results or help you get revenue, I can help you with entertainment, I'm serving you in every single one of those capacities. So um, a lot of people got to stop being selfish. Mm. When I was selfish, though, when yeah. I was all about the money, that's when I was going through that struggle. Mm, 
Okay. I was struggled the most when I thought about me. Yes. And I've always had and lived in abundance when I thought about everybody else. Mm, I love that. I love that. And so take take me to fast forward, right? Mm -hmm. So take me to um, you know, you 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 were out of space where foreclosure, you know, mm -hmm. rock bottom, got yourself out, you 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 have this thriving business, um, you created these systems. Um does you know is 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 life just up from there? Are there? Are no, there, it's always you know? rocky, man. Okay. It's okay. always rocky because yeah. the part that I left out is when you do get on, yeah. you want to hire cousins, yep. family, things like that. And I was hiring a lot of single mothers, bro, because mm -hmm. I was like, I'm doing something for the community. Yeah. And I was on Facebook, like, look at my staff. Yeah. But I didn't have nobody telling me to do it the right way, because mm. like I said, the body concept came through failing through yeah. life. Yeah. So, man, I was doing stuff like. I had $1.6 million at that time coming in a year, uh -huh. but I was paying people under the table. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know, because they can keep their benefits and things like that. Yeah. But we always know how that ends, right? Yeah, when yeah. you got to get rid of somebody, they go till, and then all of a sudden you're getting a fine from the IRS, and mm -hmm. then just all kind of stuff going on. Uh -huh. But um, it's not going to ever be like, see, people think, oh, once I build my business, it's going to go perfect. I can set it and forget it, and right. just life going to happen. No, that's why you're the CEO. That's why you got to always be there to put the things that you learn in. So it's been rocky the whole time, mm -hmm. but I got stronger the whole time to handle, you know, to handle every bump that I hit. Those bumps are going to start happening, but you can start anticipating those bumps, and you can deal and survive with them better when you get hit with them. So, yeah, I mean... I were, um, one of the things I started doing at that point, because I realized that even if you paid me to coach you, if you didn't do the work, mm -hmm. then you're going to be like, man, he scammed me out my money. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you didn't do the work. Right. And so what I started doing is I said, man, people are lazy. Yeah. Let me build these businesses for them. Mm -hmm. So I have the development team in India. Yeah. I got my customer service team in the Philippines. Yeah. I started building these businesses out. Let me build all these credit repair websites. Let me build these automation mm -hmm. and then just give them to you. Mm -hmm. You got no excuse at that point. Mm -hmm. They come in, they buy them, they train on them a little bit, and then now it's yours, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's the easier economy concept because CEOs want to walk in as CEO. So mm. that's what I did mm. is to now I can provide you with that solution to come in as a CEO because a lot of people aren't patient enough to go through the body process. Mm. So I created an alternative of if you don't want to go through the body process, then you're going to have to pay me a little more to build it out for you and it's ready. And now it's templated. You got your SOPs in place. You got all that. Mm -hmm. You can start your whole business now. And an SOP, standard operation. Standard operating procedure. Yep, yep, How you're yep. supposed to do step by step. And that's part of the document process before you delegate. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have that in place, you ain't going to be able to delegate it to nobody. They're going to ask you a million questions and you'll never be able to leave the business. Mm. And so, uh, so now, right, and, and, and I love this because, I, you know, I feel like um, a lot of your success, or, or mostly or all of your success, really, uh, comes from service, right? Comes from serving um, and meeting people where they are, right? Yes. And, 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 yes. and, and talk about how important that is because, you, you know, you just said, you know, hey, you know, you can't start as a CEO. You got mm -hmm. to work your way up. Here's this process. Let me show you how to do it. Yeah. I'm coaching you. I'm telling you how to do it. You're not doing it. Not doing and it. instead of just saying, you know what, you know, all right, you know what? This is the wrong customer. Let me find new customers. You say, you know what? Let me just create a system for the people who are not doing it. Right. Man, that, that, I love that. And so, um, you know, uh, so, 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 I, so I, I love that because I, because I just feel like I forgot. I just asked a question and I forgot the what was Well, the think about this, though. I want to I wanna, I wanna follow up on that. Yeah. If you had 100 people sitting outside, right, mm -hmm. and then you say, hey, only people with red shirt can get in, mm -hmm. and it's only 30 of them, mm -hmm. what you going to do with the other 70? Mm -hmm. And then every day that happens. That means that you got 70 people out there who will help you. I mean, who will support you, will spend with you. Mm -hmm. You ain't building nothing for them. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people do that, and then they get mad and say, well, why are they getting my client? No, they're not getting your customers. Mm -hmm. and a person can never get your customer if you're building something out for mm -hmm. a type of customer. So mm -hmm. now it's not the matter of I got to discount this or it's just not for you. Yes, those, 30, those 70 people can't get into this, yep. but that don't mean I can't build something for them. Mm -hmm. And if I build that for them, now maybe out of that 70, I can get another 40 in. That's exactly how you build yourself up. But I got it, it's not even about the money at that point. Mm -hmm. It's about finding a way to serve that 40 people. So mm -hmm. that's where the serving come in, comes in to help you get as much money as possible. Mm, I love that. I love that. Hey, it's Ash Cash. Are you new to entrepreneurship and struggling with having to figure out everything by yourself? I want to tell you about the number one entrepreneurship community in the country. Sometimes just being in the right environment can make all of the difference in the world for your mindset, your work ethic, and your results. 
This entrepreneurship community is called The Morning Meetup and it's led by my guy, David Shands, who is an amazing entrepreneur. So, The Morning Meetup is a group of entrepreneurs who meet every single morning to make sure that they're getting three things right. Information, activity, and environment. There are so many brilliant and ambitious people who simply need access to the right information to really start moving forward in the right direction. Every single morning at 8 a.m. Eastern, Dave, along with other successful business owners from all different backgrounds, meet with new entrepreneurs to shed light on things like investing, content creation, monetizing, automation, mindset, business strategy, and so much more. To stay sharp and grow as a group, they select a book, then read a chapter each day, briefly discuss their takeaways from that chapter as a part of the daily meetup. The best part is that this community is really big on not solely just getting the right information, but making sure that everyone in the group is doing the right activities to stay on track towards their goal. Dave has done a tremendous job of creating and fostering a truly unique environment for entrepreneurs to receive high-level mentorship and accountability. To get a week access pass for just $1, head over to themorningmeetup.com slash vault. You'll be able to join the community and get access to daily coaching, participate in the morning question and answer sessions to get all of your questions answers and meet hundreds of driven entrepreneurs. So go ahead, go to themorningmeetup.com slash vault. It's only $1 to start and I promise you, you will see value immediately. All right, tell them Ash Cash sent you. And so now we're at a space, um, you know, COVID 19's hit. Uh, there's some people who, you know, are losing jobs, trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Um, you know, what, what, do you, what do you say? What advice do you give to people who are, you know, struggling right now, who are like, yeah, I'm, tr- I, you know, I want to live in abundance. I want to, you know, you know, you know, live my best life. I want to get out of my situations. I'm in foreclosure. I'm here. I'm here. I'm this. Like, what's, what's your advice to that person? Well, don't think that it's just going to change overnight, right? Mm. So COVID-19 was also a wake-up. Mm. And so I think it was a good thing in a sense because mm. a lot of people, most people actually got more money than they ever had, man. Mm. Most people getting $1,000 a week on unemployment yeah. and then blew it. And then now they're like, oh, man, life sucks again. Yeah. So it lets them know, man, if I had that opportunity again. It's just like being with a woman, man. Mm-hmm. If you do a wrong and then you realize she's a good woman mm-hmm. and then she leave for real, you're like, oh, man, I'll do anything mm-hmm. to, to get it back and mm-hmm. I'm going to do right. Mm-hmm. So the same thing happens with life. People done blew through that money, right, and they got the stimulus, they done blew through it. And then now if they get another opportunity, it'll probably be different because they saw how it's supposed to look to have that success. Mm-hmm. So what I would tell them is, man, keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, is the storm don't always, you know, last. Mm. And it's just like if you're running on a track. If I have like a one-mile course, I'm running around the track four times. Mm. And you got your headphones on, got your hoodie on, and you're running, and you don't stumble. Everything is good. Mm. When you going to start paying attention? If you're on that third lap and you stumble over something, mm. are you going to keep running? Are you going to get up and look at what you stumbled right, over? Right. See, a lot of people, this they stumbling block. Mm. And now it's that wake-up. Is that something to pay attention to that when that's put in your place? Mm. You're going to pay attention. You're going to be grateful for it. Mm. So I think that the, the whole pandemic set is setting these wave of entrepreneurs up to be greater than ever. Mm-hmm. They just got to stick with it. And the thing is, is a lot of people going to quit. Mm-hmm. They're not going to make it. That's right. just It's just a numbers game. Right. Some people got to have that drive to say, no matter what's thrown my way, and this is not trying to be like a motivational speaker. Mm-hmm. Man. It's just real, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they have that grit to say, I don't care what what the hell happened? Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep pushing. Because mm-hmm. what's the worst that can happen? You fail? Mm-hmm. You're going to fail anyway if you don't try, right? Mm-hmm. So I might as well fail trying mm-hmm. than fail not trying, right? So and that's where they got to have that mindset of no matter what happens, I'm going to keep pushing through this because the momentum is going to pick up eventually and you just got to stay with the course. Because all the competitors, if a thousand people start together and only 10 people keep pushing, that's the 10 successful people right there. Mm-hmm. So I would tell them that you gonna, if, if you stop, you fail immediately. Just mm-hmm. keep going, man. Mm-hmm. That's... That's it. Yeah. And so why, why didn't you give up, right? Why, like, be, being at rock bottom, um, 
You could have easily just said, you know what, you know, this ain't for me. Man, rock bottom teaches you so much. Yeah. You know, yeah. man, how many people go to prison and get out and then they're a smarter criminal than when they went in? Exactly. They're like, bro, I know not how to get caught. Exactly. But so the thing is, is when you start failing, you know not how to fail now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you start thinking like, man, if I get it again. So those are the things. I realized I want relationship building. Mm. You know, it, I, I'm, I'm I'm really an introvert. Mm -hmm. I just like to build, 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 but I realized I needed to build relationships, though. Mm -hmm. So then I, you know, because I'm like, man, who gonna help me when I'm down and out on my behind myself? Mm -hmm. Then I had people that I can start calling on. Like, man, I got Brandon Dixon, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be where I am right now mm -hmm. because I went through another situation and almost lost it all. Mm -hmm. He literally had to max out his cars while my money was frozen, Why? The, uh, cause I had some haters that actually reported my business to the attorney general. Wow. Cause I used to make Facebook live videos telling people to ask your kids as an authorized user to the card. Mm. They filed complaints with child protective services saying I was trying to steal my kids identity. It was all kind of stuff. Wow, wow. Haters in the industry, wow, right? Wow. And so I had investigations where I had a cease and desist on my funds, bro. And Brandon floated me, bro. Wow, fast out to the shooter. Yeah, wow, and wow. I'm talking about the GOAT. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we had credit fest going, we had all this. Yeah. But I realized those type of relationships Yep. We immediately bounced back and did 13 million last year. Wow. Wow. Just last year alone. Wow. First eight figure year. Yep. And it was just behind building it the right way yep. and going off of that. If I get another opportunity, I'm gonna do it different this mm. time. And I you know, and, and I and I don't want people to miss that too, because I love I love um, you know, that story because I you know, I feel like a lot of a lot of times people feel like you know, once they make it, they start to turn their back on 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 just people or relationships. And you know what you just said just just now um, is that relationships are are the most important currency. That's the best currency you will ever have. Wow, wow. It, it is because yeah. think about it. Before Brandon, right? Yeah. Even coming in, like even bigger than that, right? Yeah. You got to have him on the vault, man. He got a crazy Not story too. Not for sure, too, for sure, but, for sure. Like. Before, I used to be on Facebook Live. I used to be giving the game, giving the game, giving the game. But like you said, um, you got to start talking about yourself. Nobody right. knew who I was. Right. So I used to beg people to get on their stage, but they like, I don't know who you are. Mm. He came in, he was like, bro, let's put media behind you. Yeah. Don't take another speaking gig until you do anything. Mm. Brandon put the camera behind me, man. Everywhere I went, I was doing a lot of stuff. My first paid gig was 15 grand. Wow. First paid speaking gig was mm. 15 grand coming mm. from begging to be on the stage. Wow. So therefore, when you're talking about relationships, it don't just have to be a shooter, man. It can be your guy who is real good with people mm. in the clubs that can actually just put your stuff out, put the word out. He know DJs. Yeah. He can give you shit. So yeah. the thing is, is we can't get it to what we just thinking about ourselves and crap on the people who are there that we, we can actually leverage stuff with. Mm. And I can help him on stuff. Yeah. I can help Brandon automate his business, yeah. create certain things. He got an international team now. Yeah. Yeah. And I got saved from losing it all right. by having that relationship there. Wow, no, I love that. And so all the things that you've been through, all the ups, the downs, right? $13 million a year. Um, if you could take all that information and 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 tell your 18-year-old self something, what, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? Be patient. Mm. Everything is not going to happen overnight. Mm. So the mindset, Anybody can be a millionaire yes. if they change their mindset. Yeah. Let me tell you what people do. So, I'm, and I'm, I like to do analogies, yes, right? Yes, please, please. So, this is a million dollars. Yes. This is $10 million. Yes. Or purpose. If I'm trying to punch that million dollars, I'm just going to punch that million dollars. Yeah. But what if I'm trying to punch that 10 million? Yeah. So that means that my punch is going to be harder because I'm mm -hmm. aiming for the 10. Right, right, so right. I'm going to knock that million down a whole lot faster that's because right. that ain't what I'm really looking for. That ain't the main goal. Yeah. So that's going to come. Yeah. But most people ain't looking for money. Mm. Nobody has a purpose to get money. Mm -hmm. For instance, what's your goal? I'm trying to get three mil. For what? Mm. So my means test is, if you can put a for what behind it, mm. that's not your goal. Mm. So that means, I want a million dollars for what? To buy a car. Okay, you don't want a million dollars, you want the car. Right. What you want to use the car? For influence. Okay, you don't want need the car, you want influence. Mm. You want to have influence for what? I want to get kids education. So you don't need none of that stuff, just go and get the kids the education. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Why you want to get a kid's education so they can come up and be productive? Why? To get the community together. So scrape all that. You get the community together. Right. So if you could put up for what behind it, for that's what? your means so test. Get all of the other stuff. That's money. That's a distraction. Wow. So we get distracted by all the stuff, and therefore a lot of people are putting that stuff in the way, and they never get to where they're supposed to be. Wow. So you got to be able to never be able to put a for what behind it. Mm. If you can put a for what behind it, that's not your final destination where mm. you're trying to go. So you need to adjust your purpose and adjust your mindset. So many people out here chasing millions of dollars. Yeah. 
Right. And they probably got a non-profit passion. You right. got something, I want to put this in the community. Why you got a for-profit business? Mm. Put that in the community. Create the non-profit. Get grants. Go out and serve. Right. right? So that's what a distraction at. Money and all of that that they chasing is the distraction mm. to where they trying to really get. When they already got access to it and don't even know it, so now they never walking in their purpose because they way over here looking over there. Mm. And that's what's happening with 99% of the entrepreneurs. And, and right, to, 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 to bring it back to service, right? is that as you start walking in your purpose and serving, the money start chasing you. Come. Right. Oh, man, listen. <laughs> I saw you with the dopest bar I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. When you chase the money, it's going to run as Absolutely. fast as you can. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But money is jealous. Mm. People don't realize money is jealous. Mm. When you running from it and you're like, bro, I don't need you, it's mm. going to be like, why you don't need me? Mm. Everybody want to be in a relationship with somebody they can't have. Money want to be in a relationship with you, but you chasing it. So if now somebody chasing you, oh, you cute, you this and that, you like, oh, I got them in the bag. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I got that. It's gonna be, they'll be there when I need them. Yeah. Money the same way is yeah, jealous. Yeah. So if I'm walking in purpose, money going to be asking why, why you don't need it. So people going to be asking why you don't need their money, and they're going to start giving it to you. Mm -hmm. Because you gonna, what you're doing is actually going to solve their problem. Wow. No, I love that. I love that. These, listen, if y'all not catching these bars, this is like big, big, super duper bars. This is stuff that you're gonna have to rewind and catch what he's saying. Uh, and so, so so for the side hustler, right? Because we we always um, you know, everybody makes entrepreneurship look sexy. Right. Um, and everybody has, you know, not everybody, but, there, but there's this sort of like shame on, you know, nine to fivers. But we know that a nine to five could be your, your first investor, oh, could, could help, you know, help support, you know, your dreams. And so for that person who has a nine to five, who is, you know, looking to, uh, you, know, you know, start their side hustle, what advice would you give to the side hustle? Start early. Mm. So the thing is, is man, we waking up, right? Because you got the nine to five. Yeah. But why are you waking up at eight? Mm. If you got a nine to five, you waking up at eight. But then when you wake up at eight, everybody know and study science and all that shows that the first four hours of your day is the strongest brain cells. Mm -hmm. You gonna go get that to your nine to five, mm. or you gonna wake up at four o'clock and work on your business and give your business the first like four hours of your brain cells mm. and then leave them with the residue, right? Mm -hmm. So I would tell the side hustler, man, when you wake up, you got to wake up and start on your business because the first thing that you think of is gonna take your whole day. Mm. So start that. I'm not one of them to go get your day started early to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the first four hours in your business, no matter where your shift at, has to go to you. Yes. And if you put that there, therefore all of those thoughts and those ideas is going to be fresh, you're going to start seeing things happen. And then now if you got your plan built out for the day, you can start making money on your 9 to 5, on your lunch break, on the 15-minute breaks and this and that. Mm -hmm. But you got to be able to go ahead and start on yourself first. Use those brain cells on yourself. And then, because I that's the exercise I do with a lot of my coaching clients, bro, and... Most of them leave their business within months, the ones with the right mindset. Mm. The ones without the right mindset, they like, I ain't never leaving my 9 to 5 mm. because they want to get up at 7.30 and knowing they got to be work at 9. Because mm. now you're in a race to get to that 9 to 5 right. to give them all your brain cells. Right. I, it's, I'm okay with you giving them your time, but don't give them all of your positive energy, all your brain cells, all of the, you know, they're determining your thoughts for the day instead of you determining your thoughts for the day. Wow. And so would you say that that mindset is... Sort of like the most everything. important thing? Yeah. Mindset is everything, yeah. man. Because if you don't think the right way, mm -hmm. you're just going to be hustling back. It's like I said, you're chasing the wrong thing. Most people can't answer the question of why do you want to leave your 9 to 5? Mm. Like, why do you want to leave? For more money. They paying you. Right. Why do you want to get money? Like I said, if you could put a for what more behind money. it, yeah. and then they don't have that, and they want to leave their 9 to 5, they don't know their purpose yet. So what I would tell the person that on their 9 to 5 Figure out, get to a point where you can't put a for what behind it, mm. right? Because nobody's chasing money. If I can give you the life you want, put your kids in the school that they want to be in, you never have to pay for an invoice, drive the car that you want, but your bank account going to always be zero. You're going to take that life, right? Absolutely. Money is not a problem then. Yeah. So people are using that, I need to get more money for a better life. What's a better life? They don't even know what that is. Right. They're looking at the other people out here in their Lambos, their Rolls Royces, and thinking that's a better life mm -hmm. when we just using those for influence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just being real, right? right? I'm Absolutely. using that for my deductions, right. for the write-offs, yeah. for the influence and things like that. I'm not using it because I wanted to save money and buy a freaking Rolls Royce, right? right? I'm using it because the people, if... Nobody is going to pay attention to me, and I know I might have a solution for them. So if they see that Rolls Royce, they just might listen. Absolutely. Right? But they're thinking that I want to buy that to go to the club and stunt. No, don't do that. Yeah. Find your purpose, man, and then the money going to come. Because if you're thinking that way, 10,000 people thinking that way. You just got to get there first and then show them the way. Right. Because people didn't follow Harriet Tubman until they found out she had the way. So I love that. So so, so, so much powerful bars, and I want you to catch this. And so, you know, I, I want to I bring it back, though, because... Um, you know, you 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 touched on 
the the fact that people were like reporting you mm -hmm. and 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 really you know got to a point where they reported you and, and you had cease and desist holds on money and and yeah. and, and you know again fast out to, to to Brandon uh, for being you know being able to, to to assist and help you get back on the on your feet. Mm -hmm. um, but talk about that right because you know there's 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 a there's a saying more money more problems yeah, right yeah. Um, Talk about haters, like when you get to a level of success, because we, we, you know, we talk about, but talk about haters, like they, their role in your success. You have to learn new ones. Mm -hmm. I was, at first, I used to just, and it's about what you focus on. Yeah. If you grow, if you grow, a hundred people like you, ten people not. Yeah. So then we grow and we like, whoa, yeah, a thousand people like us. We like that, but you got to realize now a hundred people don't yeah. like you, right? So. Um, they're going to try to claw at you. You just got to adapt and adjust and learn how to deal with them different. Mm. See, the part that I didn't tell, man, is it got so bad that I went to the closet. My wife and them, they were gone. Mm. And I sent them off. They were going to, like, well, my wife actually went to pick the kids up. Mm -hmm. I went in the closet, and I was going to kill myself, bro. I was going to let them get me down. Whoa. Yes. So I was too scared to do it at first, right? So wow. I was like, bro, I got to go get, like, a half a gallon or a liter of uh, uh, Remy Martin, VSOP, because if I go on it down this, I'll be brave enough to kill myself. But I got too drunk to kill myself. I fell asleep. Wow. So then my wife came in. She came screaming. That's when I realized I was supposed to be here to do something else. Wow. I was like, man, wait, the wait, stuff wait, that wait, I'm wait, going wait, through. Wait, 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 wait. So... The hate got so so oh, heavy. Man, it got so heavy. That you said you said I'm out of here. I was almost gone, bro. Wow. But then what's you know, like you heard the 13 million dollar yeah, year. Yeah. But if I wouldn't have went through that hate, bro, right. the business that I launched came out of the cease and desist. So I didn't have access to funds. So I built the business, right. right? Out of that for survival. And that business actually took me to 13 million. Wow. So therefore. Basically, you gotta, you know, hate gonna happen. Things right. are gonna happen. Right. You just gotta realize when you down on your behind, that's when the answers. That's when you ask the question, God, what you trying to tell? Mm -hmm. Who you, who you trying to help me serve? Right. So, man, when I came out of that closet, life changed because I was so focused, yeah. and I said that, man, you trying to tell me something, and I supposed to be helping people with something, and then boom, things wow. just start happening like crazy. Like money start coming yes. out of everywhere because. I had the money problems, but yes. I wasn't focused on money no more. Right. So when the cease and desist happened, that's when I was focusing on money. Right. So the money was froze. It was mm -hmm. taken from me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then it built me a relationship with the brands, the Kens, the people who I knew that if I would have always had money, I would have never knew how deep that relationship mm -hmm. was. And then the stuff that we building now is crazy. Mm -hmm. So the hate is going to happen. Yes. Nothing better than letting my haters, I didn't even block them from Facebook, mm -hmm. bro. Mm -hmm. Now they get to watch me buy my Rolls mm -hmm. Royce, buy my wife the yes. Bentley, buy the Lambos, yes. buy all of this and yes. travel and do what I want yes. to, you got to see that that hate didn't work. Yes. Because as long as you my competitor and hating on me, yep. I'm building. Yep. I don't have a competitor. Absolutely. <laughs> what what, what, what it say? Uh, build, build the table in front of the enemy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, and that's wow. exactly what happened. Wow. Man. That's exactly what happened. Wow. And so, man, and so, and so you're going through this, you're going through this, you know, fast out to your wife, you know. Um, talk to me about family, though. Talk to me about, you know, um, success and family because i know that a lot of times i mean you know the the, the people that are around you uh you want to make sure that you have like a you know solid people around you and sometimes you want you know your, your direct family to support you is that always the case do family always support you so do you want your clients to um or your customers to show up at the family cookout I, Probably not. No, nah, no. Nah. I mean, because it's my family cookout. Yeah. I want my cousin to be a cousin. Mm. They not obligated to be part of my business, mm. right? So, so many people falling out with family. Well, my family ain't going to support me. They got their own life going on. Right. When the last time you checked on them to see how things going? Mm. First time they asked you for some money. God didn't bless you with the money. You don't want to give it to them. You want to shame them and say, oh, I gave it away. No. Right. He probably blessed you so that you can be the pillar for them. You never know, right? right, right. So, I need them to be my best cousins. Mm. Now, if they do support, yeah. then it's going to be different. Right. Now, my rule is, as long as we're going to be family, I'm never going to cut you off if you don't support the business. Right. I just need you to be there for me as a family member. Because when the business ain't going right, yeah. so why, when I was going through that locked in the closet, we were still going to 4th of July cookouts and family embraced me and loved me, mm. right? Because it wasn't about business. I don't talk about business at the cookouts. Right. I want to talk about family stuff. How grandma doing? How Uncle Larry doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you decide to want to talk about business and support my business and share, yeah. when you come to me for business advice as family, mm. then I'm open to give it to you. Yeah. But if you don't support my business, mm. And then you family and coming to me for business advice, I'm not going to give it to you. Mm. Because you wasn't there a part of the business, we just going to keep it family. Mm. So the way that they support, the way that I'm going to keep it, but if they support me as family, I'm going to be there. But they not obligated to be mm. your, yeah. your street team. Yeah. That's why you got employees. Right. And I, I love that you said that because, you know, I, you know, I, I know that 
I mean, honestly, a lot of my family members didn't support my business, but I didn't ask them to support my business they because, didn't know. right, right, because <laughs> because at the end of the day, like you said, you know, my my family members aren't my clientele, and right. just because, you know, um, and so mentorship, right? I, you know, I I know in my career, um, you know, I've had a lot of mentors, um, you know. What's your thoughts on mentorship? How important is mentorship? It's very important, mm -hmm. but nothing, right, without the right mindset. Mm -hmm. So even if you're going to have a mentor, yes. without the right mindset, everything they talk about is going to go out the window. Mm -hmm. You're not going to align with it. Yep. So, But having somebody who paved the way who've already done it, yep. it's easier to follow them, and it's very important because now you would actually get to learn from the mistakes that they had to actually go through. Mm -hmm. And going through the mistakes, man, sometimes can get rough and can be, you know, it can end it all. Mm -hmm. So having that mentor, man, having somebody that's been through the struggle mm -hmm. so that when you do slip up and have things that come up, man, you'll be able to actually go through and get that advice and then watch. And so therefore, being able to watch other people's story, how they felt and bounce back and realize the trampoline effect, you're going to, you know, the higher you get, the harder to fall, but then you're going to be set up to bounce higher, right? Mm -hmm. Those mentors have already done that so that when you on that third jump and on that third fall, they're going to be like, bro, this is going to happen and this is how I got out of it. Mm -hmm. And as a coach, right, because I, because I, I, I would say, you know, because you're a coach, um, people look at you, look at you as a mentor. Um, two different things. Yeah, okay, talk to me about that. Because a lot of that. people, you know, they think that mentorship shouldn't be paid. Mm. Mentorship is, hey, I see you. Yeah. You know, this is, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow your story. I'm going to, you know, be inspired by you. Mm -hmm. That's my mentor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people get the two mm. switch. Now, if you want me to coach you, that's different. Mm -hmm. That's me taking away from my family to yeah. focus on you and your problems. Yeah. So being able to coach you, now I can look at your problems one-on-one -on -one versus you just learning from mine. Mm. So in coach, ah, yeah, 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 so yeah, that's yeah, the difference. Yeah. And so and, and, and at one point, and, and, and so this, this is education for me, right? Because, you know, I feel like um, I've been in situations where um, people, they didn't pay me. Right. Um, you know, they were looking at me as sort of like a mentor to teach mm -hmm. them and to guide them. Um, and I felt like I was wasting my time. I felt like oh, I was okay. taking time away from what I was doing to kind of help them. And, and, and that's why I don't really mentor anymore. They ain't got skin in the game. Yeah. So a lot of people, man, when they feel like it's free, they don't, they don't respect that. Yeah. The only reason I charge as much as I do for coaching because mm -hmm. I want that payment to hit you and mm -hmm. make it, you know, because when that payment hit, you're yeah. like, all right, I got to get my stuff together. Yeah. It ain't no joke, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because now that's your accountability yeah. until I can change your mindset to realize that the money wasn't a problem in the mm -hmm. first place and then you're going to be a monster. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just got on the front end and I has to always be about the money until I change their mindset. Because when that payment hit, you're going to be like, oh, bruh, mm -hmm. everything he say I'm holding on to. Yeah. But I gave you the same information when it was free. You just ain't do it. Right. That's why you need me now as a coach. Right, right. Now, I love that. And so, and so let, let's, 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 get some, get, let's get into your, your money business, right? So $13 million in sales last year. Um, and, you know, you've had $3.8 million a year and, and things of that nature. What would you say is the most extravagant purchase you've made? Um, for myself? Mm -hmm. um, the Rolls Royce. Okay. What kind yeah. of Rolls Royce? Uh, the Ghost. Oh, I want the Ghost. Too. It's what color black on black, bro. Oh. Black bags. Not wow. black bags, but black label. Yeah. Um, and the it Ghost was, is nice. And they only made 58 of that, that, that color, that pattern. Wow. 48 of that color pattern. Wow. Wow. And, uh, you know, so it's black on black, red trim. And when I saw it, I was like, I got to get it. I got to get it. Whew. That yeah. ghost is different. Yeah, I had to get it. And, 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 so, and so what would you say now is the most impactful thing you've done with money? Um, well, two things, man. Because um, I do random stuff all the time. And yeah. this ain't no plug for a person to start inboxing me. They struggle either. But um, I paid a house off for a single mom. Wow. Yeah, I paid a house off for, uh, what, 44000 bucks, bro. Wow. And, um, you know, because her story just resonated. And yeah. then it was a single dad. Um, man, the guy, you know, was a mechanic. He got around and doing a lot of stuff, man. I took all my birthday money, bro, mm -hmm. and um, bought him a car. Wow. So, wow. you know, and a lot of, and I, I even, I don't really like talking about yeah. stuff like that, yeah. you know, because that's just between, but... Just watching what they did after that mm. is what made it impactful. 
Wow. Because now, man, he's like, oh, you inspired me to do this. He got in a relationship, mm -hmm. got a better job, and things like that. Yeah. Now he actually goes around mm -hmm. with single moms and mm -hmm. fixes their cars, you know, without even charging them wow. anything because, I, you know, he's just paying it forward. Wow. And at wow. first he was like, I just couldn't afford to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I would say it became impactful, yeah. not because it was just a car that he got. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was kind of like a Reach 1000 moment right. where I poured into him and he was able to go and pour into 10 people. So that seed magnified times 10 at that point. Wow. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, and, and what, what would you what would you say is the uh, the best financial advice that you've ever gotten? Um, stop buying stuff. Mm. Like um, the thing is, if I wanted to go and spend three hundred on a Rolls Royce, right? Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and just if I got a twenty five thousand dollar credit card. Yeah. What's 25,000 times 12? That's 300,000, right? Mm -hmm. So why not take my $25,000 credit card, create a $997 product, right? Mm -hmm. Now I can throw $25,000 a month in marketing, mm -hmm. right? And $300,000 a year, I can spend that same $300,000 of the bank's money in that year, yeah. but I can return a million and a half off that 997. Mm. So now I can take that million and a half, throw 300 already, set it aside for Uncle Sam, that's yeah. 900. Mm. I can go and spend 300 on the Rolls Royce, that's 600. Mm. I can put the marketing money back on the car, you know, because that's getting paid, you know, over time, you, you replace that. Mm. So you still got three to $500,000 left over with the same $300,000 instead of buying that car. I just created something mm. out of the money I was gonna spend on that car to pay for the car. Mm. So the thing is, is don't go buy the joy by the website. Right. So if I'm going to spend 300 on the Jordans, I can go ahead and get my website built to provide a service to make me $2,000 to buy the Jordans and still have money left over. Mm, so I love that. So you're saying best financial advice you received was not spend money on things, no build liability. something, right? So build an asset yep. to pay for, oh look, asset over liabilities, That's right? That's yeah. every dollar that's coming out your bank account, you're robbing your kids for. Wow. So my money, I got to use my credit to stack money because mm -hmm. I don't know how things are going to shift when the right. kids, they might not be as strong as me, but right. I got an obligation to make sure that they get a lifestyle they ain't have. Right. Now, if I'm dead and gone, it ain't, ain't, ain't on me. They right. blow it. Yeah. You know, hopefully I raised them good enough to right. keep it going generation. We know how that go. Right. But I'm going to do my part. Mm -hmm. I, and my whole mission, like, if you can't put a why behind that, mm -hmm. the only thing I can't put a for what behind is my kids, they kids, they kids should never have to work outside of the family mm -hmm if they don't want to. Mm. And that's what I'm building. So they never have to work outside the family for anybody else but the family. Mm, I love it. And what, what's up, what, dispel a money myth for me. There's a lot of money myths out there. Money don't grow on trees. You gotta work hard for money. But dispel it takes money. money to make money. Ah. No, it takes purpose to make money. Ooh, say that again. Yeah, they say it takes money. money to make money. Explain no, it that. takes purpose to make money. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, is first of all, you got to make money to afford to take money to make money. Right, you see right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So the thing is, is if I am in my purpose yes. and I'm serving you, yes. and if I, I can give you 100% of the game. Everybody want to talk about 80-20. Right. I'm going to give 100 because right. I know 90% of them don't know the process. Yeah. If you're a brain surgeon, you went live every day giving the process of brain surgery, mm. right? Every day, hey, I'm doing a brain surgery here. Cut hair, do this, do that, do that, do that. You did it a thousand times. Mm. Somebody who need brain surgery, bro, from, from their family member, yeah. they ain't doing it themselves, right. even though you exactly. gave them the game, Absolutely. which means, but you position yourself, you, you serve in your purpose to show them, yeah. but you also position yourself as the person they can trust because yeah. you serve it, and you identified yourself as the expert. Yeah. So if you serve first, People shouldn't have to pay for everything. Yes. That you, all you're doing there is identifying that you're serving, mm -hmm. and then some people are gonna be like, you know what? They walk into their purpose, they serve, and I done learned so much from them, mm -hmm. now I trust them with my problem. Mm -hmm. You just gotta have serve, mm -hmm. create the purpose, people will trust you with their problem, provide the solution to it. You're mm -hmm. going through enough problems, and God give you them problems not to punish you, but to mm -hmm. develop you, mm -hmm. to be the one person that's gonna solve it for everybody right, else. Right, right. And so if you walk in that purpose, man, you are gonna have the money because now, Purpose creates money, so yes. it takes purpose to make money. It doesn't take money to make money. Oh, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so we're going to do a quick lightning round. And so, you know, we are inside the vault. And so what we like to do uh, is take banking terms uh, and really kind of flip them uh, so, so we could, you know, kind of get, get some more knowledge from you. So uh, deposit slip, right? And so deposit slip, when you go into a bank, is what you use to deposit money inside the bank. But here inside the vault, a deposit slip is a slip up, is when you made a mistake with money, right? So t t tell me about a, a deposit slip. 
Man, my biggest deposit slip early was not pricing myself right, because I didn't mm. price what Uncle Sam gonna need. Mm. See, we, we might be like, oh, we could sell it for $100 in our pricing, but I need to create a big enough cushion so that if something happened, I gotta put 25% of that to the side. Yes. So now, instead of selling the product for $700, it might have to be $1,000 now, or mm. instead of selling it for 750, I gotta sell it for 1,000 now, mm. because every 1,000 I make, let me go ahead and sit 250 to the side, and let my CPA and accounts and all that handle that, but at least it's there. Right. So now now because if I don't price it right, mm -hmm. then now I'm sitting there working for free and then, you know, paying people, right. having a hundred dollars left, but then all of a sudden you got all of these tax bills because you can't write everything off, right? Yeah. But you didn't put enough money to the side. You mm -hmm. should put enough to the side, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So it, it was to the point where I had to create products and grind just to pay Uncle Sam. Wow. So that was my biggest slip, not pricing right, wow. and then having to pay Uncle Sam out of my savings account and trying to pull money at the end of the year. All right, now, awesome. All right, and so next, um, interest rate, right? And so interest rate is the money that is paid uh, when somebody borrows money or, or, or it lends money. Uh, but for us, uh, interest rate is how interested are you in what you're doing right now? So as somebody who, you know, you're a coach, uh, business in a box, or you're building businesses, uh, you're helping people scale internationally, uh, what's your interest rate in what you're doing right Bro, now? Bro, I can't sleep at night if people don't make it. Mm. So my thing is, is I'm so far in with people. I love people, bro. Mm. And the thing is, is... Everybody, the, the stuff that I went through, like, you know, when leaders go through stuff, man, they're in a position to get that knowledge to help people. Right. So I just like to use what, you know, you don't have to go learn what I learned. Mm -hmm. I done did that. So I'm all invested in, let me help you with what I can help you with. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, wherever you can come in at to have your success, let's do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm 100% in, and that's why I'm always creating products. Even if this one don't work, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep creating products to solve problems of the people who are failing. So I'm all the way in. So my interest in what I'm doing is, yeah. is purposeful, man. Because when I'm dead and gone, it's going to keep going. Oh, absolutely. Uh, last one, cancel check, right? And so, you know, a cancel check, you know, there's, 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 you know, no money in the account right. has to be canceled. Um, what people or mindsets did you have to cancel during your journey? So the people, because we don't know what level we on, yeah. right? Because everybody says levels to this. We don't know what level we on, right? Nobody going to come and be like, all right, bro, you're on level three now. Right. You're just on level two. You right. can't hang with these right. people. Right. People going to show you what level you on. Ooh. The way that they start responding to your success, because you don't know you're successful, bro. Mm -hmm. We don't know we're successful because yeah. we're walking in our purpose. Absolutely. When people start saying like, oh, big money don't come around no more. Mm -hmm. Right? When the last time you, okay, if you're gonna tell me I didn't change and don't come around no more, let's go on and offset this. When was the last time you went to a homeless person and told them, bro, you changed? Right. You don't care about the exchange because now they change is negative. Mm -hmm. You're trying to penalize me because mine positive, and now that's a sign of jealousy, bro, and I gotta remove myself from you. Big bar. Wow. So, wow. you know, that's, I gotta, at every level, bro, you're gonna always have to remove the people. Yes. Everybody can't go, bro. And mm -hmm. the ones who have that same mindset, the ones that's all in, you'll see them there with you. Mm -hmm. uh, what's next for Derek Harper Sr.? Man, just keep serving, keep yes. serving, man. Um, business in the box. Yes. Uh, and this is new, man. Mm -hmm. More podcasts. Yes. More just getting out, because I've been the introvert, I've been the builder, yes. but um, people need to see what I'm doing, Absolutely. and not for me, because they need to see that this is available, they need to see the information, and yes. they it has to be a continuous conversation, because me coming up, the way that I came up, wasn't a silver spoon. Yeah. I want people to see Derek Harper every day yes. and be like, man, that, that dude inspired me. Absolutely. Therefore, they're going to look and it's going to trigger something in them to say, let me go serve and pick up every bar that I put down. Yeah. And that's all I want, man. No, absolutely. All right, y'all. Derek Harper Sr. I told you this is a classic. So much bars. Watch this twice. See him in the streets and be like, yo, he nice. But that's on the low low. That's a bar. You don't even know where that's from. But listen, make sure y'all tap in, tune in. If somebody wanted to connect with you, Derek, where can they find you? I'm going to do something that I never did. And don't be crazy because, uh, and this, this is me. And, but I, I do have a crazy wife, so don't text me at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to give y'all my number. Mm. But when you text me, don't be like, what's up? Because I don't know y'all, right? Tell me your name. Tell me what you're struggling with. We're going to help you. 678 961 0086. Shoot your boy text. 678 961 0086. Instagram, Derek Harper Sr. D E R R I C K H A R P E R Sr. S R, right? And Derek A. Harper Sr. on Facebook. Like my Facebook like page and then my personal Facebook page. And uh, But make sure you text me your name, your problem, and how I can serve. 
All right, y'all, another classic episode inside the vault with Ash Cash. We're closing the vault. Make sure you tap in, you tune in. I'm going to see you next time on Inside the Vault. Same time, same place. In God's will, peace. Let's get it.